Okay, so this is a video for oil activity one, and this is part one where we do the, uh, the underpainting of the background. So there are five images of different types of water situations, reflections that you can choose from. So the one that you see on your screen is the one I'm gonna be doing. And um, right now, I, in my cup, I just have water. I'm not using any oil for this, so just water because we want the first layer to dry quickly. And then on my palette, I've got three colors right now. I've got white, and then this is the French ultramarine blue. This is a purple bias blue. And then I've got the cerulean blue, <clears throat> which is a um, green bias blue. And there's a Google Doc on the oil... Under, material, under oil, under materials, there's a list, a Google Doc of what bias each of the colors are. So you can check that if you're not sure. So we'll start with some water, and I'm just going to do the, the gradient, basically, that you see in the background behind the cabin. And the gradient is going to cover not just the sky, but also the water, since the water is reflecting the same or similar colors in the water. All right, so and as you make your gradient, you're going to have to keep adding water to your brush and then maybe adding some paint as well in order to continue the flow of the uh, of the the paint itself. So if you get, see any streaks, just keep blending. Okay, a little bit of water on the brush will go a long way to do some blending. Towards the top of the sky, it gets much lighter. So now I can maybe add some more. I want to add some more white into the mixture. Get some more water. And then the top of this should be a little bit lighter than the middle of the image. All right, now I'm just going to keep going, and I'm going to reverse that gradient as I get to the bottom because you can see that the water gets lighter as it gets towards the bottom. So back to my mixture. And actually, since I have this lighter color already on the brush, I'm going to stay with that, and I'll work the bottom of the page now and work upwards. It doesn't really matter what order you do this in because the paint is going to stay wet for you as you work. So you can always kind of go back and add and subtract and blend and re-blend as you work. And you can see that like I don't really don't need a lot of paint. I'm mostly using water. And again, the reason for that is I want the I want this layer to dry quick. I don't want this layer to be wet for a week because then I'm never going to be able to paint over the top of it. Well, I'm going to have to wait forever before painting over the top of it. So I want it thin and mostly water, not a lot of paint, and then that way it's going to dry quick. Okay, so then that's like pretty much the, the you know, that's the, the basic part of, of the, um, the background uh, or the underpainting is done, and then you can see that um, on the along the horizon line, just above the grass, uh, there are some there's some uh, brighter blue in there, and so I'm going to use the cerulean for that because this blue is a different blue than the ultramarine that I used for the base color. So again, this is where color bias becomes really important because knowing which bias you have can help you to adjust the tones as you need. So now, while the background is wet with a smaller brush, I'm going to come in and add some of this cerulean blue into the edges of the sky back here. This is where the blending of the oil paint is really handy because I can work slow and I can take my time 
I don't have to remix colors every time I need the same color again. Um, so there's like a, there's a lot more consideration that you can do kind of at each step and you can make a lot of changes easily because the oil stays wet. So there's that. And then what I can do is now with a bigger brush, let me go back and then just blend the edges kind of softly at the place where those two different colors of blue meet. And then that kind of creates that kind of atmospheric phenomenon back there, whatever's going on. And actually, you can see that there's a little bit in the water right in here. There's some of that same blue at the at the top of those uh, those ripples. So I'm going to add in some more cerulean here. I'm not going to get too detailed with this right now because I'm just really, like I said, getting the base, the base coat done. I'm just getting the underpainting done. And but I am being careful here to kind of space these streaks a little bit apart from each other to suggest the idea of, of water ripples. But I don't need a ton of detail at this point. I can add the details in with subsequent layers with uh, more of the linseed oil and um, you know brighter colors, denser paint so that the ripples really stand out. At this point, I'm just really looking for an underpainting, kind of a base tone, and that's my, my structure, my, my foundation for the next layers. Okay, that is part one.